Welcome to How to Play Piano Lesson 24, where we'll learn another classic tune and in the process, get an opportunity to learn some more about intervals. Let's get ready to learn and play together. Firstly, check in with your posture. Make sure your back is straight and your neck is long. Your shoulders are relaxed. Your feet are flat on the floor. Your forearms are angled down towards the keys or level with the keys. And you've got dome-shaped hands, curved fingers, and lovely relaxed wrists. And yes, you can see I have locked my hand and given myself a nice bruise. Never mind, it doesn't stop my fingers from working. Let's warm up. Last time we did our hand and exercise with our right hand. Let's do that together straight away. We might do this nice moderate tempo. And if you remember, every time we start, we skip a note, go up to our little finger, down to our thumb, skip another note, up to our finger, and back down to our thumb. Let's do that together, just one octave. One, two, three, four. about having control, about keeping a nice steady tempo, strengthening those curved fingers and keeping your wrist relaxed. It's really got nothing to do with speed. Let's do our left hand today. Same pattern. So we start with our little finger, skip a note and go all the way to our thumb. Skip a note and all the way to our thumb. Let's try that together straight away. One, two, three, four. Why don't we do a couple of scales? Let's do our C major scale, two hands together, one octave. Off we go. One, two, three, four. Let's do our G major scale, one octave. Oops, I'm a bit out of shot. Let me see if I do it up here. I'll do it up here. One octave of our G major scale together. One, two, three, four. Let's do our C major contrary motion, the one that starts in the middle. Together. One, two, three, four. Excellent. And let's do our G major contrary motion that starts in the middle as well. One, two, three, four. Excellent. And we might finish off with a couple of arpeggios. Let's do our C major arpeggio. One, two, three, four. And our G major arpeggio together. One, two, three, four. And we're done. And that's quite a nice little structured way to warm up your fingers before you start your practice. Bit of Hannon first, get the fingers warm up and nimble, and then have a go at some of your scales and arpeggios. Have a pause and have a play if any of your technical work needs a little bit more practice. Last time we looked at the dotted crotchet, musical character and musical form as we played the little song Alouetta. Have a pause and have a play and see how you go with this little tune. 
Here's my interpretation. interpretation compare with mine? Were your chord notes sounding at the same time? Could you hear the level of sound changing as you played gradually louder and gradually softer? Did your song flow smoothly along? Did you feel that your performance created the musical character that you wanted to communicate? Could you play from start to finish at a consistent tempo without stops and starts along the way? If you're not sure about how you're going with this tune or any others that you've been learning, remember you can always send me your audio or video recordings for free coaching and feedback. You can also post a video of your performance onto our How to Play Piano and Keyboard private Facebook gallery. Here's today's song, entitled Lavender's Blue. Lovely classic old tune. I'll show you my interpretation and then as usual we'll go through the music line by line. Here I go. As you can see, we've got the treble and bass clef. We have a time signature of 3-4, so we're counting three crotchet beats in a bar, three beats in a bar. There's no key signature, and by that I mean there are no sharps and flats indicated just after the clefs, so it looks to me again like we're in the key of C major. We've got the tempo marking moderately fast, so it seems to me that this is going to be another bright, happy, fairly peppy tune. If you scan through the music, you can see that we've got a range of notes. We've got crotchets, quavers, dotted minims. It's all happening. We've got some rests, mostly crotchet rests. We've got repeat dots um, at the halfway point at the end of our second line. We've got some curved lines indicating that those notes need to be played legato. And therefore, the other notes in the piece, we might play detached depending on the sound that we're trying to create. It looks like the melody is in the right hand and our accompaniment is pretty much in our left hand. It also looks to me like this piece is fairly busy. And we've got quite a few intervals in there as well that we can have a look at along the way. We've got some dynamic markings, MF at the start, and at the very end we've got a gradually softer, a P which is piano, which means soft, ritardando, gradually slower, and a pause on our last note, so that needs to be held. Let's have a look at the first line. We've got the treble and bass clef. It looks like all the action is in the right hand. Let's do that first. We're starting on middle C with our thumb and holding that down for the first beat. Then going up to our little finger on the G for beats two and three. And then in the second bar, we're playing middle C and G together. We've played that a few times. Let's have a look at it. You might remember that two notes played together are called an interval. But what interval is it? There's lots of different sorts of interval. Let's have a look at this one. To work out what the interval is, you need to count from the bottom note to the top note and include the bottom note in your counting. So if I was going to count the notes between middle C and G, I'd say there's one, two, three, four, five notes. So this interval is a fifth. Remember, it's not a chord because chords contain three or more notes played at the same time. Let's have a look at what comes after our fifth. On the second beat, we've got a quaver note on the F. We that lasts for half a beat. Two, E on and, D on the three, and the middle C on the end. So remember, quavers only last for half a beat. And because that's the smallest note in this piece of music, I'm going to count all my ands when I start to learn it. I'll do those first two bars again. One and two and three and one 
and two and three and and you can see we've got a nice legato slur so we need to join up those notes if you have a look in the next bar we've got middle c with our thumb one and you've got to stretch up a little bit to the a with your pinky two and three and in the fourth bar we're playing middle c and a again another interval what sort of interval is it? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a sixth. It's a really sweet sound. I'll play the whole first line. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three. One, two, three. Good. You have a turn. One and two and three and one and two and three and one, two and three and one and two and three, one and two and three and good. And you can see that when I've got those lovely long notes, I'm taking advantage of the fact that I can really relax my wrist into them and soften the sound. Let's play that first line with our right hand together. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one two and three and one two three good and we've got the dynamic marking mf so that needs to be moderately loud or fairly deep let's have a look at our left hand lovely c chord to start with c e g five three one we're holding it down for the first beat and then some rests three again in the second bar same thing one two three then we're changing to a little f we've got a little pinky staying where it is our second finger playing the f which is just underneath it and we're just moving our thumb down to the a one and then two beats of rest and in that fourth bar we've got c with our little finger and then we've got f with our second finger and a with our thumb and you can either play those notes one after the other or if you want to you can hold the C down and play them like that even though it's not written that way depending on the sound that you want we've got two notes being played together again these two F and A again it's an interval what sort of interval is it if we count one two three it's an interval of a third Remember the first three left hand notes are chords because they've got three notes in them. I'll play the left hand that first line. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, and two, three. Good, you have a turn. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Excellent, let's do the left hand together. One and two and three and one, two and three. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and. Wonderful. Have a pause and have a play of your left and your right hand separately. Let's put hands together from that first line. I'll have a go and then it'll be your turn. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two, and three, and one, two three. Good, your turn. One and two and three and 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 one two three excellent let's do that together one two three one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one Very good. Have a pause and have a play if you need a little bit more practice with your hands together in that first line.
Let's have a look at the second line. We'll do the right hand again. Looks fairly similar in the start. We're on middle C. One and two and three. Then we've got our interval of a fifth again. One and little run, legato. Three and then we've got back to F with our fourth finger. One, two and three and one, two, three. In bar three, those notes don't have a legato slur, so if you wanted a different sound, you could play them detached. One and two and three and one, two, three. Let's do the right hand. You have a go. One and two and three and one and two, three, one, two and three and one, two, three, one, two, three. Good, let's do it together. One, two, three. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one, two, three. Fabulous. Let's have a look at the left hand. We've got a chord again, a C chord. One and two rest, two, three, another one. One, two, three. Then we've got lots of intervals. We've got C and A played together, and that's an interval of one, two, three, four, five, six, a sixth. Then we're moving our thumb down to play C and G, which is a fifth. Then we're moving down to play the C and the F with our second finger. One, two, three, four, that's a fourth. And then finally we're finishing off with C and E, one, two, three, that's a third. So we've got a sixth, followed by fifth, fourth, and a third on that first beat. And then a little run on the two and three and with a legato slow. I'll do the left hand again. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one. Let's do that together. One, two, three. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and. Good. As you can see, there's repeat dots at the end of that line, so we need to go back to the beginning and play the whole tune through again. Have a pause and have a play of line two with your left and right hand separately. Let's put line two together. I'll have a go and then it will be your turn. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and... I've decided to play those notes detached because I have to come up with my left hand so I think it's for my, to my ear anyway, I prefer that sound. But that's just me. Your interpretation will be and should be and could be different. Uh, let's play that second line together. One and two and three and 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 one, two and three and... Excellent. Have a pause and have a play of line two hands together and then have a go at lines one and two and don't forget you need to repeat them. Let's have a look at the third line. This is really a little coda or an ending. Uh, we've got our first two our first two lines together make a couple of verses and then we've got this little tail or this little ending to finish off our song. Let's have a look at what's going on. We've got left and right hand playing alternatively, so I think we'll just play this together and be done with it. Our first note is C in the left hand, and we're playing that on beat one. One, and then our right hand takes over. Two and three and, and the beginning of the next bar, it's on middle C. One, and then our left hand takes over on the G. Two and three. we've just got some notes being played together let's find them we've got a fifth interval in our left hand C and G and we've got our third in uh, our right hand C and E and we're playing that on beat two 
and three and one, two, three. I'll do that again. One and two. If you have a look at the dynamic markings, we've got a gradually softer at the start because we were at M MF, so we've got quite deep and we can come back to a P. And then in that second last bar, we've got a retardando, so we need to slow down as well as play softly. And then our last bar, we've got a pause. So let's play it together, trying to add in all those different bits and pieces. One, two, and three, and one, and two. and have a play of your coda, hands together, and then you'll be able to play the whole tune through. Remember last time we began to consider musical character, and I mentioned that the sheet music is really just a starting point from which your creativity can take over, and that you can overlay your own musical ideas and interpretation to create your own way of communicating this piece of music to your audience. Remember, there's no right way or wrong way to play this piece, there's just your way. So when you're putting this piece together, consider the style. It's moderately fast, it probably needs to be played nice and brightly. So select a moderately fast tempo that suits you and conveys the feeling that you want to create with this little tune. Now would be a great time to have a pause and have a play and review some of the music from your previous lessons just to keep them fresh so you've got something to play when someone asks you to sit down and make some music for them. That's it for this lesson. Make sure that you feel completely comfortable with the skills that we've looked at today before moving on. Next lesson, we're going to be looking at one of the busiest and most challenging pieces we have yet to encounter. <laughs>